today we'll take a look at the conceptual architecture diagram inside LaTeX. A conceptual architecture diagram is also called a CAD. I have a project that's already loaded into LaTeX and now I'm going to open a view on it. And since we are interested in the CAD, I'll click on new conceptual architecture link. And there it is. I have my first conceptual architecture diagram. Um, and as you can see, it's a box in a box diagram. So it started out with the entire project, which is dollar root, which then contains the first subsystem called ISOAG lib. And you see that there is a little plus icon here. And if I were to click on it, then I have expanded ISOAG lib. And it seems to have two subsystems inside it. Since this isn't big enough, we'll, make, we'll expand it so we can see what it is. And you can see that there are two subsystems. One is called COM and the other is called HAL. And they have lines connecting between them. So the dependency from COM to HAL if, is, the, is the dependency that I've just highlighted. And the dependency from HAL to COM is the other dependency which goes the other way. If we wanted to see these dependencies, the details of the dependency, we simply have to select the usage pane and now we're looking at what inside HAL depends on what inside ISOAG lib in the usage pane. On the other hand, if I were to click on COMS dependency on HAL, then you can see that the usage pane on the right hand side uh, is context sensitive and changes. If I wanted to see all of COMS dependency, then I simply select on COM and the usage pane is now showing me all of the dependencies of COM. So these, this is a so so a conceptual architecture diagram is consists of boxes and arrows, uh, a very traditional diagram. But you'll see the innovations that we have added to it uh, to give it an architectural focus. If we wanted to look inside a particular box, because that box perhaps is too small, uh, and and you needed to see it in itself, you simply uh, double click on that box. And there it is. We have opened a new conceptual architecture diagram uh, and it has eight different subsystems in it. Uh, and you can see that we are seeing the various dependencies which are associated uh, with, with between those uh, subsystems. Now let's apply, um, let's apply a, a partitioning algorithm to it. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. So I've selected COM and I'm going to choose the partitioning icon and I'm going to select the component partitioner. And notice that what it did was to split it up into three parts and you can see some interesting things here already. So these three parts are separated by this dashed line in the middle and that dashed line uh, is a layer line. So it tells us that you could take the COM subsystem and once I applied partitioning, you could split it up into three layers uh, and that partitioning algorithm now guarantees that you won't see any dependencies which go from a lower layer to an upper layer. Um, you can also see that uh, LaTeX will sometimes leave empty space uh, in these boxes. Uh, and if you would like to get rid of it, you simply select the empty space and now we can come and click on these X's. So if I were to click on the lower X, it will move the lower edge up or if I were to click on the upper X, then it would move everything down. Since I want to move my lower edge up, I can simply go ahead and move it up. Um, if we were to resize this, so you can always resize these things. You can see that as I resized it, everything changed uh, proportionately. And in fact, let's uh, make it a little interesting. Let's resize it in a different way. And now I can apply partitioning again. And when I apply partitioning, uh, it's, it's the same layers as you can see. But now we see that instead of since those five boxes didn't fit within that space horizontally, they were put, they were distributed within this space. So Latix will optimize the space usage uh, to show you the various boxes uh, within a layer uh, as well as put them inside layer in, in a particular order. So even these actually have been ordered when they are within this layer. Um, as you can see, there is colors possible also in the lines. And a convention that we have chosen uh, is to show you 
the blue lines are the lines uh, which go downwards uh, and the blue lines are the lines which go to the right so you can see that these blue lines are going down and the blue lines are going right on the other hand the lines which go up or the lines which go to the left have been colored red and the purpose of doing this is to highlight the dependencies which would violate the architecture and so when you apply a component partitioner the highlighted red lines are the ones which are causing cycles and so simply by looking at the lower layer for instance I know that because I applied partitioning, all five of these subsystems are in uh, are cyclically connected together. And I've also highlighted the dependencies by these red lines, which are the ones which, which if you were to remove, would get rid of the cyclic dependencies. You can also see the same thing in the second layer uh, and in the third layer. A conceptual architecture diagram, you can also group things and change things yourself. So if you, for instance, wanted to resize this box uh, you could come in and you can make this box larger if you wanted you can uh, uh, in fact as as we make changes here it is i made this box larger and perhaps i'll make this box a little smaller and i'll do something more interesting i'll make this box larger and so i've made these changes and these changes will be contextually interesting for you so you can make those boxes which are more interesting or that you want to focus on larger but the point I want to highlight is that this is an editor. So if I want, I can simply undo this. Uh, and there it is. I, am, I have undone all my changes. So this is an editor where you can do and undo and you can make changes. We see that there is, uh, uh, if we wanted to, if we thought that part six virtual terminal that you can see should be in the second layer, then I can simply come in, drag it, and put it in the second layer, and I have a choice. If I choose the lower edge of a rectangle, it will be put underneath that subsystem. If I choose the right edge of that rectangle, it will be put next to it. So let me just choose the lower edge of the rectangle and put it down. And you can see, then when I moved it down, it made it of the same, uh, of the same length. If I wanted to get rid of this white space, for instance, if I wanted to, then I have a choice I simply select on it and I get this empty space rectangle and it has these interesting icons so if I were to click on this icon it'll make this box go all the way to the right let me undo this uh, if I were to click on the icon on the top then it would bring down the box which is above it uh, and what you will discover is that you can actually build these conceptual architectures by moving boxes around, by resizing them, by getting rid of empty spaces in a very quick way. So here is an architecture, here are diagrams that you can draw very quickly, where you can do some discovery, where you can do editing. You can take groups of subsystems and combine them together if you like, um, and you can all do that very quickly. So it's a very powerful diagram with an architectural emphasis that I urge you to try out.